Hello guys, this is Sky Vault, and welcome to the second episode in this Love 2D Shader tutorial series. So today we're going to be working on something I think is really exciting. Uh, we're going to be working on lighting and creating 2D, simple 2D lighting for our, uh, for our project here. So let me just start it up and just show you what we got so far. We just have a shader that all it does is just let the color pass through. It doesn't change the color in any way, and you can see that right here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be um, we're gonna be uh, implementing something called uh, Fong shading. Now, Fong P H O N G is a uh, shading algorithm, kind of that uh, is really simple, but is used all over the place in computer graphics. And um, yeah, it works on these few concepts, including ambient color has diffuse color, and then specular. Um, I basically took this algorithm, which is usually uh, used for 3D objects, and I basically just removed the specularity, and um, yeah, it works really, really well for 2D uh, lighting. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm not going to explain everything um, and how it works and all that. Um, I will give you a simple rundown, though. So basically how it's going to work is that for every pixel there is on the screen, we're basically going to take the distance between that pixel and every single light source in the scene. And the closer the pixel is to the light source will basically make it brighter. The further away the pixel is going to be darker. Now it's a really simple explanation of it. There's a couple more things going on behind the scenes or that we're going to be doing to make it more um, customizable. For instance, each light's going to have its own color. It's also going to have like a fall off. So how fast does it suddenly go to black and stuff like that? Um, and those uh, those variables will be you know the constant, the quadratic, and then the uh, the uh, the linear values and stuff like that. So in the next episode, we're going to actually play around with these, and we're actually going to see what each uh, variable does. But in this one, we're all we're going to do is implement it. So the first thing that we're going to do is basically create some variables up here. Um, right now, I'm going to define create a constant variable. Uh, this is called a macro. And um, this is just going to define how many lights we're going to have total, like the maximum number of lights we can have in our scene. And we're going to set that to 32. Now, this, with this macro, this is a macro. So pound define basically says that wherever we see the word num underscore lights, just replace that with the number 32 right here. All right. Now, we're going to create something called a structure. And this structure is going to define our light. Now, a structure basically. Um, is, uh, it works just like it does in C for the most part, and uh, you can kind of think of it if you have no if you have no experience in C, you can kind of think of it like a table that you can't add keys and you can't remove keys, but all you have is just variables in here. So you can say light dot this, light dot that, and uh, things like that. Um, don't forget the semicolon right there. That always trips me up. So the first thing we're gonna have is a vector two position. This is the two D position in the scene, um, and that's gonna be according to pixels. Next, we're going to have a 3D uh, vector, and this is going to be called diffuse. Now, the diffuse is basically the color of the light, and uh, diffuse is just a standard naming convention for that. And then next, we're going to have the power of the light. So, how powerful, how big the radius of the light actually is. Alright, so now we want to do some externs. And if you remember, an extern is something that we send into the shader from the CPU. So from our computer, we're going to send variables over to the graphics card, and uh, this is where we're actually defining the, va uh, the variables that we're sending in. So what we're going to send in is an array of these lights that we defined right here. All right, and we're going to name that lights. And the amount of lights that we're going to be able to have is just uh, num lights. All right, so this array looks a lot like the uh, rays in C. Um, now, often we're not going to want to use 32 lights all the time, right? Like sometimes we only want to have like three lights in the scene, or maybe 20 or something like that. So to specify, this this basically says what is the maximum number of lights, but we actually want to tell our shader how many lights we're actually using. And that's, we're going to create an extern int, and this, we're just going to name this num lights right here. And that's going to be the, how many lights that we're actually going to pass in. Alright, so the next one is we're going to pass in how big the screen is. Now this screen coordinates variable doesn't tell us how big the screen is, it just tells us where on the screen the current pixel is that we're uh, sampling and all that. But right here, we actually need to send in how big the screen is so that we can do some distance stuff. So we're going to name that screen. Now, these next uh, 
uh, three variables are just going to be constants, and we're going to be we're going to turn these into extern variables in the next episode. But for right now, we're just going to hard code some values in, and I'm not going to explain exactly what these do until the next episode. But for now, um, well, it, it they kind of the names kind of represent what they uh, what they do. So we're going to do a float constant. So constant, you can kind of think of it as you know, uh, well, okay. So I'm not I'm not going to try to describe it right now. All right, next is quadratic, or actually let's do linear. This is the linear value, and we're going to set it to 0 0.09. Uh, um, and then the rat, quadratic. Now, I got all these uh, values off the internet from a website called Learning OP uh, Learn OpenGL. Um, and then, you know, I played around with them in my own... 3D project and all that, and I just moved them over here. So if you want to actually under, uh, know where I got these values, that's that's basically where. All right. So if we just run this, nothing's going to happen. Of course, all we've done was define some variables. But now we're ready to actually get started uh, doing some rendering, or not rendering. Sorry, but doing some math to actually calculate the uh, the the light. So first things first, we want to normalize some uh, the screen coordinates. What is uh, to normalize a value? It basically means from taking something from zero to the maximum number that it normally is to zero and one. It basically normalizes the the value, and that's really useful for like multiply multiplying like a uh, the light's constant value. You want to maybe multiply it by the normal uh, the normalized value. It, it just makes it's basically a scalar, right? It's it's a lot easier. It's for the same reason why Lep2D changed from zero to two fifty five. Uh, color range to 0 to 1. It's just a lot easier to work with. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. So let's convert the uh, screen to uh, n its normalized screen coordinates. And that's as easy as... Uh, or sorry, we're not normalizing the screen, but we're normalizing where on the screen the pixel actually is. So for right now, it's like... Uh, as it is, screen coordinates is 0 to the size of the screen, but we want to make it so it's 0 from 0 to 1. So this could be... So in the middle, it'll be 0 0.5 or something like that. Hopefully I explained that correctly. Um, and then we just take wherever it is on screen and divide it by the total screen coordinates right there. Next, we're just going to set the main color of the screen, of the, of the background, to, uh, to be black. So the, ba the scene is going to be black, um, starting off. And that means there's no light in the scene. And let's actually use this value right here. And now, if we run this, we're going to get a bug. Um, oh, it's for a different reason. So, unexpected return, expected comma. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, okay. We missed a semicolon right there. So, if we run this, we're going to uh, we're just going to get um, a really washed out scene. I'm actually surprised this actually this worked. Uh, this needs to be. Oh, sorry, I made this a four. This needs to be zero. All right, now everything's black. All right, there we go. That's what we want. So everything's black. That means there's no light in the scene, and now we're just going to be adding um, color to the pi each pixel and stuff like that. So next things, uh, the next step is to basically loop through every single light and then calculate the distance between the light and wherever on the screen the pixel is. All right. So to do a loop, it's just like it is in C. Um, so we're going to say for i is equal to zero, i is less than num lights i plus plus. Now this is going to go from 0 to 1 less than the number of lights and uh, if you in GLSL arrays um, start at 0. In C or in Lua arrays start at 1 so there's a little bit of a learning uh, kind of like you know going from GLSL to Lua can kind of be a pain just because you know of the different um, just because arrays in Lua start at 1. Anyway so let's actually get that light from the array. So we're going to say light uh, the type, uh, this light is of type light, and is equal to lights at index i. Alright, so we got the current light. Now let's get the distance. Um, and if you if you remember back to your uh, your geometry days, you know the distance formula um, is, uh, you, you know the, the, the distance formula, right? Um, we don't actually have to calculate that out, we don't actually have to write out that uh, formula, because uh, thankfully GLSL actually has a built-in function that we can use. So let's create a variable, name it distance, and set equal to length. Length is basically the distance formula. So we're going to take uh, normal, po uh, oh, actually before I do this, before I do this, 
we want to normalize the uh, screen, uh, the position of the light also. So we're going to say vec2 norm pose is equal to light dot position over screen. All right, now this will convert the uh, screen's position into zero and one space. Now we can do norm pose minus uh, norm screen. There we go. So now we got the distance between the pixel and the light. And uh, this is where uh, the, the Fong PHONG shading comes in, uh, the algorithm for that, basically. So attenuation um, is just the term for uh, the fall off, basically, how bright the, uh, the pixel is according to the light source, uh, how bright the current, pix bright the current pixel is. Um, and the algorithm is just 1.0 over the constant value times the linear value, uh, or sorry, plus the linear value times the distance. I'm going to say plus the quadratic times the distance squared. So distance times distance, just like that. All right, that's the equation to basically um, to basically allow us to change the different uh, values um, that the different properties of the uh, the the light source. All right, and then now what we want to do is actually add to this main light. So right, right now it's black. So we want to add some brightness to the uh, to the diffused um, variable right there. So we diffuse is uh, plus equals light the the lights color. So it's going to add the lights color. Now if we just do this, uh, we're missing a semicolon. Looks like. Let me see where. Attenuation is one. Uh, oh, we're missing. We're not missing a semicolon. We're missing a um, closing parenthesis right there. All right. Uh, if we do this, uh, I'm surprised there's not any value there. Oh, yeah. There's not going to be any value. Anyway, so we add the diffuse, and we're going to multiply that by the attenuation. All right, and the last step is we want to make sure the diffuse color is clamped between zero and one, just because you know that's the uh, that's the color space that we're in. So if it goes over, we want to make sure that it well it doesn't go over. There we are. So if we now run this, everything's going to be black because we haven't passed in any values, but we're actually ready to pass in values into our shader, and hopefully it will work. So let's actually do that. So if you remember how to pass, if uh, in the last episode to pass in values into a shader, uh, we use the shader dot send um, shader dot send function. So the first thing we want to send, let's go back to the top here. We want to send in the uh, the screen coordinates. All right. So let's actually do that, and that's really simple. All we have to do is say shader send, and we're going to pass in a two unit array, two unit table, because it's a two D vector. So it's love graphics dot get with love graphics get height just like that, and now we've sent in the screen very uh, external variable. All right, so now we want to send in how many very uh, how many lights we want. So remember this uh, variable right here. Oops, sorry, right here. We want to send in how many lights. For now, all we're going to send in in this episode is uh, whoops, what am I doing wrong? There we go. I was trying to be, uh, there we go. All right, um, so we're only going to send in one for now. And uh, in the next episode, we'll send in many different lights and animate them and stuff like that. Um, and I also think it would be a pretty cool exercise if you guys figured out how to send in multiple lights yourself. But uh, we're going to pass in number of lights. We're going to just set it to one. So we're only going to have one light. And now let's actually pass in the values for the light. So, how do we do this? Because this is the first time that we've tried to pass in an array. Now, we're not just going to send in a, um, a table. Uh, the actual way to do that is a little bit more complicated. So, the way we're going to send in, let, let's say we want to send in the first light's position coordinate. Alright, so the way to do that, we just go down here, and we're going to say shader send lights. That's the name of the array, and then the index, so zero dot position and then you know dot 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 
Um, this is how we would actually do it. And remember, the first element is 0, not 1, because arrays in GLS cell start at 0. So that's how we index the first light. That's how you index the second, third, fourth, and so forth, and so on. All right. So let's, uh, let's uh, yeah, let's do that. So we're going to set um, the position. We're gonna, let's just set it to the center of the screen for now. So say, let's actually copy these right here. All right, so we're going to divide that by 2, divide by that by 2. All right, so we sent in the position. Now the other two values that we need to send in is the diffuse and the power. So let's actually do that. So shader send lights. Now the color I'm going to set it to is just a white color. And we'll, we'll play with that in a bit. So white, of course, is just 1, 1, 1. Uh, and it's only, we're not doing an alpha value, it's only three units right there. Now for power, a uh, power is in pixels, so we're going to say lights, zero, and let's just set it to uh, 60 pixels, 64. All right. All right, so moment of truth, let's run it. Uh, bad argument, string expected, got table. Uh, where did that happen? Right up here, we forgot the uh, the name of the uniform, so that's going to be screen right there. All right, so let's run it, and everything's white. Of course, that's not correct. So let's go back and let's debug some things up here. All right, um, I missed a kind of important thing right here. So <laughs> this just needs to be multiplied by the light's power. All right, so right there. This light, this uh, this distance needs to be multiplied by the light's power. That's what I missed. And now, if we run it, we'll see a very nice looking uh, light right here in the middle. Now, by 64 pixels, I mean right in here, where it is a constant brightness, where it's as bright as it can be. That's the 64 pixels. Everything, uh, this color, this scale right here, is controlled by the quadratic, the linear, and the constant variables right there, which we'll play with in the next uh, episode. Um, before I let you guys go, I want to play around with the uh, color and just change the color just to show that that works. So let's create a nice green light. If we run that, we'll see that the light is green. All right. Now let's try set, changing it to a uh, let's do a yellow light because yellow is nice and warm. Uh, now we got a nice yellow light right there, and uh, let's just do a pure red one. And we have a nice white red light. Now, red light, of course, is going to look darker just because that's how uh, that's how red light works in real life. It's uh, our eyes don't pick it up as well, or something like that. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully, we can really expand this uh, light lighting engine and uh, make it something really cool. Um, if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. In the future, I have plans on making it so that we can have, like, light geometry and, like, do shadows and stuff like that. But that's all, um, that all takes time and, uh, a lot of, it takes some time to figure out and all of that. But yeah, in the next episode, I'm going to be playing around with some values and show you how you can, uh, maybe incorporate a, uh, a little bit of a user interface. And, uh, just kind of play around with it and have fun. But yeah, I hope you guys found this useful. And, uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.